Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Acer Switch Alpha 12, which from this angle looks kind of like a laptop computer, and it kind of is, but if you turn it sideways, you can see that it's also a tablet. The keyboard is detachable, and the kickstand is adjustable to a number of different angles. And you can tuck the keyboard away behind the screen when it's not in use. Strong magnets hold things together, so strong that all you really need to do is bring things close to, uh, to each other, and the keyboard draws power from the tablet itself. There's no battery in the keyboard. And you can see that this model has a backlit keyboard. Not all models do. Acer positions the Switch Alpha 12 as a sort of laptop first device, and that's because unlike some two-in-ones, it, uh, it really has all of the specifications and the power that you'd expect from a full-fledged laptop. It's not exactly the easiest thing to use on your lap because you have sort of three different points to balance here, which is the keyboard, the front, and the, uh, the kickstand itself. So I find that it's probably better to think of it as a notebook than a laptop. On flat surfaces, it works great. On your lap, it's a little bit clunky unless you detach the keyboard and hold it in your hands, which is something that you do have the option of doing. Prices start at about $599 for a model with a Core, I thought, Core i3 Skylake processor, four gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage. This model is a $800 Costco exclusive that is, um, has Core i5, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and comes with a keyboard and the, uh, the pen. The pen is an optional $50 accessory usually. The keyboard comes with all models. So if you think about this as starting at $599, it's much cheaper than an entry-level Microsoft Surface Pro 4, for example, which starts at $899, and that price includes the pen but not the keyboard. And that has a Core M series processor as opposed to Core i3 for the entry-level version of this tablet. So let's take a quick look at some of the hardware here, and then we'll talk a little bit about what you can do in software. The, uh, the tablet has power, volume, and Windows buttons here on the side. Brushed aluminum rear panel. 5 megapixel camera, which is just out of view here. There it is, 5 megapixel rear camera. Micro SD card slot, which is the reason I didn't close this up to show you. And power, USB 3.0, USB 3.1 type C connector, and a headset jack. And that's pretty much it for the ports. There's also a microphone here at the top. And then on the front, we've got a two megapixel camera and stereo speakers, which are reasonably loud. The power adapter looks more like something you would expect from, uh, from a laptop than you know, a small compact tablet, and it takes a couple hours to fully charge the, the tablet. In terms of battery life, it should get, Acer says, up to eight hours, but more realistically, if you're using it with Wi-Fi or if you're watching videos, five to six hours. In my tests, maybe more like four to six hours, depending on what you're doing. Six hours definitely is achievable, but uh, you're probably not going to get uh, seven or eight hours very often. And four hours, depending on what it is that you're using it to do, playing games or doing other things that are really CPU intensive could take a toll. Um, overall, the design is kind of nice. I find it's a little bit heavy at two pounds to hold in your hands for an extended period. You can use it in tablet mode by propping it down on a desk, of course, or you could always just prop it up and use it sort of like uh, an all-in-one desktop style computer here if you wanted to run some uh, apps like... Netflix, which works just fine. So you can watch videos on it, you can play games on it, you can edit documents on it, anything that you can do on a laptop. Now again, it's only got about four to six hours of battery life, so you might want to carry that charger with you if you need to uh, have extended time beyond that. That's really kind of the biggest downside and the fact that it's a little bit hard to balance, I think, on your lap. But as a notebook, it generally works pretty well. Um, I like the keyboard which is pretty responsive. As soon as it's connected, you can start typing. Now, I did notice at first that when you push down on the center, it uh, it sort of flexes a little bit. I got used to that pretty quickly, and, uh, and I found that the full-size keys are pretty easy to type on. One thing I don't love about it is down here, the arrow keys are also the page down, page up, home, and volume, there's just a lot of things that are, and uh, screen brightness, a lot of things that are crammed into the space where you'd normally expect to find maybe two keys. There's six keys over here. And that's something that I found a lot of Acer laptops do. Um, the display is an IPS screen, 2160 by 1440 pixels, and it looks pretty great for the most part. 
uh, there are some applications that can be a little bit tricky to deal with at that resolution. So it does support continuum mode, and that means that if I detach, ah, strong magnets there, uh, detach the screen, I have the option of switching automatically to this sort of desktop or a notebook style user interface. And then when I launch applications, they launch in full screen mode. And if I wanted to launch a second application, I'd have the option of sort of doing split screen. So I've got uh, Kindle here and I can watch a video and read a book at the same time or whatever it is that you want to do, I guess. So applications that are really designed for Windows 10 and are downloaded from the Windows Store, uh, you shouldn't have any real problems with the high resolution screen, but I do find, that's interesting, it didn't take us out of continuum here. Let's try that again. Uh, but I do find that applications that are not really optimized for Windows 10 can be a little bit trickier. So let's go ahead and fire up, for instance, the GIMP image editing application. And while we're doing that, I'm going to open a web browser. So you can see multitasking, everything works pretty nicely. Uh, it's a very responsive system, and I find it's on par with um, other systems with Core i5 Skylake CPUs, for instance. The reason I want to open this app, though, is... Okay, so we've got GIMP open here, and it's a 2160 by 1440 pixel 12-inch display. That means a lot of pixels packed in per inch, and the pen comes in handy. Just tap it to the screen there because it gives you a fine tip for tapping icons that might be too hard to reach with just your fingers. Now, you could, of course, use the touchpad, and there is a precision touchpad below the keyboard. Um, so let's go ahead and file, open an image that I've been editing recently here. And you can see it's the picture looks pretty small. It's 680 pixels across in both of these pictures, but the web browser knows that I've got a high resolution display, so it sort of scales it up to make it easy to see. Uh, GIMP doesn't. And likewise, these little toolbars over here, these little uh, icons are pretty tiny and they'd be hard to touch if I was just using my fingers. Actually, I'm not having too much difficulty, but sometimes you'll hit the wrong one when you wanted to uh, hit a different one. So, so it is nice to have the pen for fine input when you're dealing with uh, some of those applications that might otherwise give you difficulty in high resolution screens. Uh, my handwriting is not great. My artwork is not great. So for me, the $50 accessory is not necessarily the top of the list of things that I would want, but it is also nice when you're using a tablet to be able to hover. So I'm not touching the screen, but you can see that it's highlighting certain things below me, or I can um, move things around using it. So there are certain Windows applications that are easier to interact with with a pen if you're not using a mouse and keyboard. So the pen works pretty well. Um, and so do other accessories. Like I'm gonna go ahead and plug in a gamepad here and show you that we can even do some gaming. Now it's not a high-end gaming machine here, but I've just fired up uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, which works reasonably well. Now I'm not very good at this game, but I just wanna show you that it can play. And you can use the keyboard if you wanted to. I just happen to have this Xbox-style controller, so I'm going to go ahead and play with that instead. Has Intel HD graphics, not uh, discrete NVIDIA or AMD graphics, but... With the uh, resolution set to 1600 by 900, and uh, graphics quality set to very high, the game is very playable. Probably should have brightened my screen so you could see it better, but you can see my reflection. Camera angles are adjustable, graphics are pretty smooth. 
everything's pretty responsive. And that's all I'm going to show you because you don't need to see me embarrass myself at a game that I barely know how to play. Oop. Or how to exit. So that's a look at some of the things that you can do with this tablet. As I mentioned, at two pounds, I find it a little bit heavy to just sort of hold for reading. But if you're treating it as a laptop first, the way that Acer uh, recommends, I think it's a pretty nice device. Now, is it going to be the, the best solution for everybody? Not necessarily. I mean, if you are looking for something that you can use on your lap, if you're looking for something with really long battery life, um, then maybe you want to look elsewhere. But for $599 and up, I think there's a lot to like about this particular device if you are in the market for a two-in-one device that can work either as a tablet or as a notebook. Um, when you're not using the keyboard, as I mentioned, you can either detach it, and then instead of having a 2.8 pound laptop, you've got a two pound uh, tablet. You can also just sort of fold it behind the screen for out of the way usage here, or protect the screen by folding it down on top. The fabric of the cover and sort of the palm rest area is sort of this, well, fabricy, it almost is a velvety uh, sort of surface. I'm not entirely sure what the material is. It does sort of collect dust, so it doesn't take very long to start looking kind of dirty, but it feels nice. And, uh, and it gives you something sort of nice to rest your palms on when you're using the tablet. And as you can see, it automatically wakes up from sleep when it detects that you've uh, opened and closed the screen. It should go to sleep, and it should wake up. It can take a moment to wake up, so it doesn't always recognize that you've done that. And I found that after, if it's been turned off for a little while, sometimes you have to press and hold the button for maybe three or four seconds instead of just tapping it for it to come back on. The light should glow, but it's kind of awkwardly placed to see it when you're looking at the front of the screen. But I'm going to go ahead and tap it. You can see that it's glowing, and then the screen did just come back on. So that's a look at the Acer Switch Alpha 12 for gaming, for web browsing, for pretty much anything that you would ever want to do with a, um, let's go ahead and type in my password, anything that you'd ever want to do with a Windows computer. It just happens to be a uh, tablet that also works as a laptop. And typing this way is kind of hard. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I guess one other thing that I like to show is that it is capable of handling high resolution video since we've got this high resolution screen. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can find a 1440p video that will take full advantage of the, the screen. And for copyright issues, I'm going to go ahead and mute. That's actually not what I wanted to do. So that's fourteen forty video. In fact, if I can get that tab to come out. Let's do a 1080p video at the same time. So there you go, two videos, one 1440 and one at 1080p. And I'm not really sure what's going on there. I guess she's cooking and doing calligraphy. Uh, this is Brad Linder with Lilith Huting and a look at gaming, web browsing, web video, uh, reading eBooks, doing other things that you might wanna do on a tablet that is also a laptop 
with an $800 configuration of the Acer Switch Alpha 12. And uh, prices start at $599 and go up to a little over $1,000 depending on the configuration. Pen is a $50 accessory. Depending on the model you get, this model actually comes with it and the keyboard comes standard.